Today I'd like to discuss the basic process of creating the, the blends and tertiary surfaces, secondary and, and the tertiary surfaces. Here you see I have uh, three primary surfaces all coming together and this is a very common situation that you'll see when creating a class A surface. Now one of the first things you need to do is you need to verify that the surfaces that you've created all come together nice and cleanly. These are overbuilt slabs so with that I'm going to go in and use a tool that allows me to verify that the surfaces coming together are nice and clean. So I'm going to go into a wireframe view first. Actually, let's do it like this. There we go. Now that I'm in my wireframe view, I'm going to go into analysis. And under analysis, I have what's called surface intersection. Pick my first surface, pick my second surface and verify that what I'm looking at is nice and clean. As you can see, I have a nice clean transition that ramps all the way up and through. This doesn't have any warbles. This is showing me that I don't have any divots or anything that wanders around, so it looks nice. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna hold my shift key down, deselect this surface, and select this surface. And basically do the same thing. Verify that what I'm looking at is nice and clean. As you can see here, uh, it's a very nice and clean shape. Let me in increase my scale factor. Uh, the only issue that you may have, in this case the minimum value, is somewhere in the middle of the segment rather than pushed out to the very end. So this, may, this is creating some sort of a peak, a little bump, or flat, in this case a, a flat spot, or uh, you, you know, this is going to show poorly in a reflection on the blend. So this is something that I'm going to just simply leave the control points on. And for this, I'm going to go into my model navigator or part navigator. And I have a couple of X forms set up on these surfaces, so I can just double click on that surface. And by doing so, this now allows me, I'll just move this normal, to modify this control point on that surface. And as you can see, as I move a control point, that minimum radius begins to move along. There we go. So what you would do is you'd verify that the, the, the change that you've just made is something that is well within the limits of the styling requirements. So you're not just going to idly make changes. You're going to verify that what you're doing is something that styling is okay with. You may have to deviate off of the original data a little bit more than expected, but to get a clean surface, that's acceptable. All right. Now that I've verified that's clean, let me go ahead and delete that. And let me do one more surface intersection between this surface and this surface and verify here. And you can see, once again, my max value is sitting proudly in the center. And if that's really bugging me, I can go in and modify my surfaces once again, just as you saw me. I may need to go in there and pull this in a little bit or pull this out and get that curve to clean, clean itself up. Or it may be an acceptable situation. In this case, I'm just going to leave it. Other than that, everything looks nice and smooth, very clean, no sudden interruptions. If I, I can increase the needle count, you can see that it's just a very clean looking intersection. Now that I have that intersection in, or verified my intersection curves, excuse me, I'm going to go and put my blends in. So I'll just go into surface, I'll use aesthetic face blend and I'm going to turn off, I have a setting here turned on, I just want to turn off my non-associative center line curve, I don't care about that in this instance. So the first blend I'm going to put in is going to go from this surface to this surface, and I'm going to drag this out and make it fairly large. Right now I have a G3 continuity, I know this because I can see the three lines over the circle, and I also know this because I can see it inside of here. I'm going to also make sure that I do not have anything trimmed. I want to leave everything as such. I don't want to trim. I want to go back afterwards and do all the trimming once I have all of my blends put in. If I trim everything up and I run this top blend, I'll just end up being, uh, being uh, uh, creating, or I should say, creating one single blend that wraps all the way around, whereas I want to create individual blends, and you'll see why here shortly. Select OK, create my first blend, Control J to change the color of this beauty. Let's go here, and let's go to yellow. 
I'm going to go and create a couple more aesthetic face blends. I'm going to pick the surface, reverse, pick this surface. Obviously, much too large. So I'm going to shrink that a bit. And what I want to do with this is I want to use some of these wonderfully powerful tools. And I'm going to make a linear transition. So at this end, it's slightly larger than it is at this end. I can come in and enter a value. Maybe I want to go from 45 down to 35. And apply that. I'm going to come in and make another blend from the top to this front end. And again, I'm going to reverse this. So here, you'll notice that I need to switch these values. So at this end, it needs to be larger, which is this end. And this end, it needs to be smaller. So over here, I'm just going to say 30. And I'll say 25. And this way, I have a nice gradual transition that's going to wrap all the way around. This may be your styling requirement. Now that I have all my blends in place, I'm going to go in and create styled corner. With the styled corner, I'm going to select all my blends. Blend 1, blend 2, blend 3, and this base face. As soon as I pick my base face, you'll notice that it puts in all of my inputs. I have several methods of creating this blend, whatever my transitions are. I, I got flow, I've got G2, G1, G3. If this is an exterior surface, you may need to go to flow. Um, if this is an interior surface, G2, even G1 may be acceptable depending upon what you're working on. So in this case, we'll pretend it's an exterior and jack it all the way up to G3. And again, I have some controls here. Maybe you want this to look a little different. I can pull this out such. And then how I want the surface to flow, let me scroll this back up. You'll see uh, tangent continuous, trim curve, I've got line projection and isoparametric. I'll go isoparametric, I'll go isoparametric on this and this is just a simple isoparametric flow. So there's another shape control that you have. And I also have iso U curve for flow control, iso V curves and ISO curve U and V. I like what I see and I'm going to leave it all as such. Say no trim and select OK. Now that I have all of my blends put in, I'm going to go ahead and trim all of my surfaces. So I'll go into trim sheet, pick the surface, and I'm going to pick these edges. Now you'll notice that it says tangent faces, I have single face, I have uh, all sorts of ways that I can select elements, and I also have single curve, connected curves, and such. So for this, I'm just going to leave everything at the default, just leave everything at single curve, and I'm just simply going to pick this edge. And I'll come up and pick this edge. And apply. I'll do the same thing for here. My boundaries are this edge and this edge, apply. And I'll do the same thing for this. Uh, I'm gonna split to that edge and to this edge and also this edge. And as you can see, everything's nice and trimmed. So I'll come back and do the same thing for the remainder of these. I'm going to trim this to that edge and this to that edge. This guy to there and cancel. Now you can see I have a blend that comes in, wraps around nicely and comes out. Again, I have all these controls on these blends now. So if I don't like the way this is looking, I can come in here let me go ahead and pin this open. This is my aesthetic face blend. Maybe I want to make this other end a little larger. You can see here it's modified. Let's go and make this a little bit bigger. So I'm adjusting that shape now with some parameters that the aesthetic face blend has given me. 
Now to verify that the surface is nice and clean, I can do several things. One of them is what's called a reflection. So I'm just gonna pick all of my surfaces. Oops, there we go. Hit my apply. And I'm gonna turn this up. I have a pretty good video card on this thing. So I'll just say ultra fine, hit my apply. And then just verify that what you're looking at is pretty good looking. In this case, you can see I have nice flows coming across, coming up. And this is again where you may need to make some modifications to your surfaces to get the flow to look nice and clean. Like here, there, this may be a little flat spot that the stylus doesn't like, so you may need to go in there and modify this blend corner. Let's do that. Select OK. So for this guy, you may need to go in there, change how this thing is built. As you can see, I have my highlights are still on there. So I may go in here and say, all right, you know what? I want none. And now this gives me a, a nicer transition coming across. So these options are things that you may need to play with to get the surfaces to look exactly the way you want. And as you can see here, I have a much better transition and much better flow coming around that corner. It sort of races around that corner without interruptions. So that's more along the lines of what a stylus is going to look for. So here we just talked a little bit about some of the tools and the order of operations of how you would go about building nice, clean, fully parametric corners, blends, off of your parametric base elements.